What's happening, everyone? Chicano Prophet here. Ready to drop my Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua 2 prediction video. You know, I think I'm going to save my Canelo Alvarez post-fight reaction video for another time. Even though he won. In glorious fashion. Just like I predicted. But we've got time. I mean, we all know nothing's going to happen between 160 and 175 while Canelo's on vacation. You think the kids are going to do anything important while dad's away? I don't think so. So now let's focus on the big boys. Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz, two boxers from two of the sport's biggest fan bases, and they're fighting at the Dunes? And that's when you know them Saudi's got money. Although, I, mean, you know, I don't know how many of us are traveling over there to go. I'm not going. Because, uh, you know, the Brits and the Mexicans, we like to party, and that place is fucking strict. You looking for a way to get, like, stoned legally over there? You're probably going to have to commit adultery. What, you like taking shots? Well, enjoy taking those required vaccinations. You know, and this might be a little bit of a petty thing too, but um, one of the things that I like about going to see a fight live is looking at all the beautiful women in heels with dresses that are just barely hanging on. Can you imagine if that shit happened in Saudi Arabia? If uh, people don't get the cue that uh, it, it, you can't do that, it might cause a mass slaughter. I'm not interested, so I'm going to be sitting my ass over here. And it's kind of a shame too, because, you know, one of the things that I like about the heavyweights is, you know, they got some good looking women and I like to, you know, kind of see them uh, displayed, you know, in between the rounds. I mean, these women are... They've got it going on. I mean, Dante Wilder's woman? Oh, God damn. <sighs> Andrew Ruiz's woman? Well, you know, I, I barely just saw her during the first Ruiz Joshua fight. I don't really know much about her. But I want to know more. Tyson Fury's wife? Well, I mean, she's not like spilling out of her dress, but she's cute. And the way she keeps holding it down at the house, popping out all his kids while he goes and fucks around, and she stays? It's fucking sexy. And AJ, well, you know, I guess AJ never seems to have that particular problem. Hey, I'm not making uh, any types of uh, allegations towards him, right? Especially before he goes to Saudi Arabia. I don't want to say anything that'll get his ass detained. Besides, I don't really think that's what's going on. It's pretty evident to me that he's going through uh, a shift. He's trying to go through his own little awakening process, and it's kind of rough going because he doesn't have anybody to listen to. But he's doing his best, you know, and so what I think he's doing is he's abstaining from women to try to induce cosmic consciousness, okay? He's trying to get that sweet pineal gland drip going. Uh, so, good, good on him, I guess. And the other thing that I noticed is, like, this also explains why in the first fight, his head was kind of up in the clouds before the fight. He probably read Eckhart Tolle, thought he knew a thing, and was just kind of like, boy, all we have is the ever-present now. That's all we have, right? There's no future, there's no past, all we have is now. So I'm not going to worry about the fight. Until the bell rings. Ding. All right. Here we go. I'm in a fight now. That's not going to work, dude. Okay? There's a couple reasons for that. One, you got to get in the zone. Okay? You can't just, like, click on. You got to get warmed up. It's the same reason why it didn't benefit you to retain your seed before the fight. Even the old school boxers used to enjoy that stuff. But if you're transmuting your sexual energy to go up your spine, you can't keep that friction down here where old school boxers can use it, where they could get mean. Right? Ready to whip some ass like a bull. Right? I mean, not that I would know about it. I'm just saying. And I could tell that Anthony Joshua was starting to ask bigger questions, too. It started when he was in the corner uh, during that fight, and uh, his coach really couldn't give him the appropriate answers for the much bigger questions that he had. If he had somebody like me, I could have fielded some of those questions. When he was like, what shot was it? Well, could have been that shot in the third round where we hit you. Could have been when you got knocked down in sparring about a week earlier. It's hard to say because in this particular reality, you're kind of chinny. What will Ruiz come out and do next? Well, he's probably going to go and jump up in the air, take on your belts, go on parades, do the late night circuit. And now that he's got a piece of the heavyweight crown, he's also going to require $50 million to fight you, just like the other heavyweights. So he's going to be fitting in real nice. I guess what I'm trying to say is he's not really getting any benefit from trying to do the awakening process and be a boxer at the same time. Although I guess with abstaining, I did notice that he had a little bit more spring in his legs during that fight. He did a good job of running around all around the ring until, you know, ultimately getting knocked down quite a few times and quitting. So, we'll see what he decides to do next. He did say that he might quit, so I mean, if he does quit, like I said, I'm not looking to take anybody on, right? But if he wants, he could be my security guard. And uh, sometimes I like to go to the hood and try to preach and enlighten people. So if he wants, he can serve with me. He might actually learn something. So when we go up to a gang of toughs, he'll be next to me and, and they'll know he's around so I can kind of speak freely and go, Gentlemen, what's happening? Which one is in charge? 
Okay, well, I'm going to guess it's not the guy wearing a hairnet. Actually, you all look stupid. What are y'all standing outside for anyways? What's the matter? None of your mothers would let your friends come over? Because you're all 30? Or, or, or what, is just like a drug deal? Or like, what's going on? You know what? I'm just going to assume that you guys never even talk about the higher power or that you exist in a realm. Not only do you look stupid, you are stupid. They don't like a particular message and they start coming towards me. They're going to focus on Anthony Joshua first. Just in a time for me to get my little ass out of there while he's going down. Be able to go preach somewhere where I'm appreciated. So we'll see how things go. But yeah, I'm here to make a prediction video and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm making a prediction. Uh, this time I'm not going to use any powers. Okay. I just want to be one of the boys. Break down the sweet science in this particular reality. Okay. I'm not going to peek. I swear. All right. So one of the things that I did was watch the Andrew Ruiz, Anthony Joshua fight. The first one. Um, and it's nice because you can kind of like look around and see what's going on. And I tried to break down the fight. I tried to watch it to study. But who did I see in that crowd? Little bitch ass Mikey Garcia. Yeah, so I'm still pissed off about what happened, okay? Um, and it would have been fine if he was just in the crowd doing his own thing, all right? Uh, but he started shouting instructions to Andy Ruiz. What the hell are you going to tell him to do, huh? Like, how to close the pocket on a much bigger black guy? You've got to be shitting me. And don't give me any of that shit about how Andy Ruiz was a heavier guy. That don't mean shit, all right? Because if it did, then the heavyweight division would have all kinds of eras of fat asses ruling over the division like Jabba the Hutt. But that doesn't happen, so that doesn't count. Andrew Ruiz beat his ass because, like he said, he had big Mexican balls. And uh, it's funny that Mikey Garcia is given two cents. What was he saying? Like, hey, Andy, if you want to look good after a round, even if you lose, shake your hand up in the air like a dumbass. Nobody is wondering what the hell Mikey Garcia has going on. Have you noticed there's not much of a void? I mean, even his brother's having a good time with people like Ortiz and Ramirez, beasts, and instructing them in the corner to go at it with the other dude and to not pay any respect to the other guy. It's glorious. As opposed to like when he's, you know, training a little baby bro, you know, trying to get this kid home safe to his mama. He's like, all right, Mikey, breathe. Do you want to go into their round, pretend like you're trying to win this fight? Okay, well, you know, go in there, you know, and just go back and forth, you know. And it, But if you get him out of a position, don't take that punch, okay, mijo? Because then he's going to whoop your ass some more. All right, let's go. Ridiculous. Um, I just think he's kind of funny just walking around. You know, it's like nobody seems to care what he's doing. The only person who seems to be following him around are like the fight hype guys with a camera. He keeps trying to get signed, but, you know, everybody kind of knows that he, he's kind of maxed out on his uh, earning potential. And so, I mean, unless they're looking for, like, a glorified jobber, uh, or, you know, if PBC needs, like, a token Mexican again, I guess you could go on that route. But ultimately, nobody cares, and I'm happy about it, all right? Gotta let this go. I'm starting to get a little pissed off, and, you know, uh, Mikey Garcia is not good for my inner peace, right? So I, this is the last time I'm going to discuss his little bitch ass, okay? All right. I'm feeling better. Okay. So time for me to make a prediction. So let me do my little man dance in my head, play this out. Ruiz by KO. Hey, no bias here, all right? Uh, even though Andy Ruiz is the first Mexican heavyweight champion to win it. And he is Mexican, it counts. Juan Manuel Marquez said so, okay? And that's good enough for me. Juan Manuel Marquez, he was so Mexican that his Mexicanness back in the day could bring Jim Lampley to tears on a telecast. Actually, you know, there were like a lot of things that could make Jim Lampley cry back then. But Marquez made it look easy. So that's my prediction. I want y'all to enjoy the fight. And, uh, well, I'll see you on the other side. Peace. What's happening? You still hanging out? Well, it's time for me to get fucked up. So if you want, we can talk a little bit about it. Oh, here comes the old lady. Bad timing, my friends. I'll see you later.